Hello beautiful creative people, Kyla Givehand here for the Stencil Girl Creative Team. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a really fun project. We're going to be making this amazing little cube so if you stay tuned till the end I'll tell you how to get the template that I used to finish up this project. So I started out with uh, these Ecoline brush tip watercolor markers which I'm really loving and of course my stash of stencils. I started by spraying my paper with water and then bringing in these watercolor markers and using them in a lot of different ways. Depending on how you use the marker on the page, you'll see that you can get different effects. If the paper is really wet and there's a puddle, you will get some spreading. If the paper is just lightly damp, you can get the dot effect. So I'm also taking it and just scribbling around the page and then I'm going to come in with my spray bottle spray over the dry marker to dry paper. So just to show you the different ways you can use those markers in case you're interested. Um, and what I'm doing here is just laying down a very simple background um, just to get us started. I brought in a second piece of paper because well why let all of that great watercolor paint go to waste. I thought I'd just sop some of it up with another piece. So while I'm doing that I'm just kind of dabbing uh, the paper towel around so that the watercolor effect does flow onto those white spaces. Now I'm coming in with a couple of markers again and just making some really random doodly scribbly lines. Um, no rhyme or reason really, just again to give it another way to move color on the paper. And then I just used my watercolor brush to move it around and then my heat tool to dry that page completely. Next I'm coming in with some golden paints and I picked an assortment that I think fits the color scheme that I already kind of have going on here. So I just grabbed those um, and now I'm picking through my stencils um, as I try to figure out which of these I want to use for this. So of course I pull out a bunch and then I end up you know, kind of fumbling through them and figuring out which ones are calling to me in the moment. So here on my craft mat, I'm actually going to lay out some paint. That first one is manganese, manganese, manganese blue hue. The second one is viridian green hue. And then I have dioxazine purple and cobalt teal is the, or cobalt turquoise is the last one. So that very first stencil that I'm using with the viridian green is from the Stencil Club of February 2015 by Carolyn Doobie and it's um, in that pattern play set that she created back in uh, 2015. I love this stencil. Um, it just is so great for background texture. Um, you can use it on the foreground but I really love it as a background texture stencil as well. So I then switch and begin to use um, this lovely stencil from uh, Daniela Wolf, and that one is S121. You can find that one on the Stencil Girl site as well. It's a really fun one, and I'm using it here with purple, and that purple is so deep. It is a really, really deep purple. Um, so I'm just going around and putting this on the larger sheet because, again, we're making a project out of this. So eventually pieces of it will be cut, it will be folded. Um, so really what I'm trying to do is just to get a really good um, sort of uh, stenciled background that has lots of different bits and pieces on it. So now I'm fumbling through and I'm looking for um, another stencil to play with and I end up going to this little dandelion uh, stencil that is from Mary Beth Shaw and that one was in the Stencil Club of February 2014. It's a really cool one. Um, I love that little, I love the design it makes uh, on the paper. So I've switched to the cobalt turquoise for that. And I'm just using a um, makeup sponge to put my paints on. And what I find by doing that is if you get the right amount of paint there, it actually dries a lot faster than you might think. So I really love playing with that technique because it means I don't necessarily have to come in with a heat tool, although sometimes I do. So I'm looking for one more stencil here and I end up going with the Scribbles stencil that I uh, believe is from Mary Beth again. And this one is, again, just a really neat one. And what I'm doing with it 
is I'm trying to use it as a connector. So connecting the um, other patterns that I've already, or the other stencil designs that I've already put down, just to create some, some cohesiveness on the page. So almost using it as a bridge between the two, just to, um, or between other, other stencils, just to give it a little bit of cohesiveness on the page. And then of course, I'm just gonna put it around in places where I think we need stenciling. Um, and so I continue to do that with that stencil. And next I'm coming in with some dilution sprays and this Southern Hemisphere uh, stencil from Mary Nasser. I love all of the map oriented stencils. And so I'm using the dilution spray to spray that. And then I'm just showing you here really quickly that I have another pad of paper over to the side and I'm using to kind of wipe that stencil off because of, again, that, that is some good inkiness that I want to save, save. Now I'm going to start measuring and marking off all of the parts that I need to cut and fold and tape. And I realized after the fact that most of this was not being shown, shown on camera for whatever reason I was out of frame for most of this. Um, so what I've done is created a template for you that you can use to follow along with the same way that I have um, measured my space in here. So feel free to hop over to um, the blog and grab that or use the link below in the description. Okay, so I'm going to zoom past me doing all the measurements so that you can, we can get on to the good stuff. Okay, so everything has been cut and I am now going through and I'm going, I, there are several flaps in this project that we're making. So I'm going to come through and just finish up some of the embellishments for my flaps. And what I mean by embellishments is I want to make sure that I cut my flaps at an angle so that they fold in properly and that it doesn't create an extra layer of bulkiness. So what you see me doing right here is just using a um, triangle to make my 45 degree angle cuts or lines so that I know exactly where I want to cut them. Now I'm coming in with scissors and just going ahead and snipping all of those edges. Next, I'm going to score all the places where I will be folding. On the template that I've given you, this actually is designated by the, the dotted lines. So you will score your uh, paper in the same fashion. Basically scoring wherever we're going to fold and wherever the flaps are going to actually become flaps. So I'm using my bone folder to just make sure I've got really good creases and I'm folding all of the parts so that it does exactly what I want it to do. And you'll see that what we're making here is a cube. And I'm going in and just kind of labeling, really for no other reason than it just helps me um, to know where I want to put my words. Because now I'm coming in with Carolyn Doobie's um, stencil and using some of the words from this uh, to add to the different sections of my cube. So my thought is that this cube could be a photo cube. Um, you can use it for a lot of different things. You could cut pieces into it and you could use it for a little tea light holder. Lots of different things you could do with this, but what I'm doing is using it um, almost like it's as a decorative element in my, in my home. So I'm just going through and using, again, that dioxazine purple because it's, almost, it's so dark it's almost black. Uh, but it looks black on the, on the page here, but when you are up close to it, it is actually um, really very deep purple. So now I'm just going to start playing around with the words, adding a few embellishments here or there, using a black pen to just go around the word quest. And then eventually I decide that I kind of want to just leave the words as they are. So I'm going to go ahead and jump us to the next segment and show you what else I did to finish off this cube. So now we come to the taping part. So I'm using double-sided tape for this. You absolutely could use glue stick. I'm using double-sided tape just because, well, number one, I like it better than glue stick. I, I just seem to have an easier time with double-sided tape than I do with glue stick. Um, but you can use whatever adhesive you have. I do recommend using an adhesive that is not 
too liquidy so not a fluid medium not a gel medium just because you won't be able to put these under weight to get them to hold because we're making a cube so the take for me just allows especially at the the last fold you'll see that um, we have to put two sides in at once and that kind of creates a problem if you've got a glue stick it just gets a little messy so um, and you don't want to mess up on the very last step <laughs> so now I'm just folding in my flaps and putting my cube together and one thing I will say is this works really well if you're using a really thick water paper I happen to be using a 98 pound Canson mixed media paper and it's good for this but I would like it to have a little more weight now you could put things inside of it to weight it you could put um, a whole bunch of cotton balls or uh, whatever you can find that will make that space a little heavier so that it is weighted down on your um, on your table or wherever you decide you want to display yours okay so now just playing around with those last two flaps because they are the most crucial because if you mess them up well you've got to start over or you have to try to fix um, that piece if it doesn't fold quite right so take your time with this uh, I'm it looks like I'm going faster than I am because I've sped up the video here but I was definitely taking my time with this and I encourage you to do the same should you try to make this lovely stenciled cube so the last few touches here and I kept saying two flaps but there is a third flap that tucks in to close it now here's the other thing you could absolutely leave this box open you don't have to tape it closed um, this was just a design choice that I made um, but you absolutely can use this as a cube that is open on your desk maybe you want to put pencils in it or pens or um, maybe you want to use it for your watercolor brushes or whatever things you've got that you might want to stick inside of there you could totally do that as well so I'm finishing up the last little bits here and again those two sides are going in at the same time so I'm being super careful and working really and now ta -da, it's all done and I am just in love with it it's a cute little journey cute all right lovelies thank you so much for watching I sure hope you enjoyed this and again I invite you to download the template over on the blog or use the link below Take care and I'll see you next time.